What's up guys, Malicious Jasper here and welcome back to another special of Let's Talk this day. I'll be talking about piracy and used games. Uh, the reason why I, I don't know, I rem don't remember really what made me want to make a video about this, about maybe some developer complaining again about how piracy and used games are destroying the games industry or whatever, something like that. Anyway, I want to talk about piracy and used games. So the problem developers and well many people in the games industry have with piracy and used games is of course that the developers and uh, yeah that the developers get less money because people uh, acquire those games uh, in an indirect way so pirates they just download a uh, they just download the game illegally um, someone cracked the code put it online and people download it and they can they can play the game without restrictions so that is one way to do it and well one way they see a loss of income which is true um, they don't uh, those people do not pay for the game so the developers uh, don't get money from that and then you have the used game sale uh, is actually when a retailer buys games back from gamers who don't want to have a certain game anymore so for instance they finished it and they don't want to have it and they want to get some money back so they can buy a new game um, they go to a retail store they sell the game back and then of course the retail store uh, for instance like game game spot and everything um, they sell the game again against a lower price and the developers don't get any money from that so i can understand why they say this i can understand why they claim that they lose income out of the piracy and used game sales but they make it they s make it seem like an enormous problem which it actually isn't and that's the problem i have they pretend that piracy and used game sales from retailers is destroying the game industry but that's not true that is just a very short sighted way to look at things and i'm gonna tell you why first of all something that the game industry has to realize and that actually many other industries have to realize as well is the fact that they are not competing against each other so different developers aren't competing against well are not only competing against each other so for instance Call of Duty versus Battlefield 3 those DICE and uh, Treyarch uh, they're not only competing against each other for sales but they're also competing against any other entertainment form that requires you to pay money that means uh, music for instance music if you want to buy a CD you've got less money to spend it on something else um, DVDs uh, when you buy series uh, movies uh, anything that something you can do in your pastime that requires you to spend money that is actually something that competes with the game industry. If I want to go see a movie in the cinema that means I have less money to spend on video games. If I want to buy a, a, a music if from some artist and he's made a new album and I think oh I want to buy that new album that's less money for games that I have. Right? So that's something they need to realize. They need to realize that they not only have to be competitive within their own sector but within the entire entertainment sector second thing that's very important there are economic problems in the world and they have been present for a very very long time so since 2008 the world economy has been you know falling behind a bit all right now you might think this is gonna be some boring talk about economy it's not gonna be that I'm gonna make it very short and very easy people make less money uh, less people there are there's more unemployment so there are more people who do not have an income so they cannot spend money that's important they have less money 
and they cannot spend as much money. Also, people are kind of afraid for, you know, when they they could lose their job, so they keep more money aside. So that's just, in short, there is more. There isn't as much money to spend as there used to be, so that is something that the game industry hasn't apparently realized, because its prices, the game industry prices, have not changed in maybe, as, as far as I know. When I when I was young, I'm now 21 years old. When I got new games for the Nintendo 64, that's 15 years ago, I paid almost as much as I pay now. I paid, I think. Um, 62 and a half euros modern day euros because the euro did not exist back then it was 2500 belgian francs anyway out of the that's not the point now i pay 56 euros so it's only two and a half euro euros more expensive than it was 15 years ago but so much in those 15 years have changed that you think how is it still possible that they still have the same that the price is still the same. There are so many games out there. There are indie developers, um, a lot of mobile gaming on Android and Apple, etc. Uh, you know those app games. Um, there are more developing s developers um, in r regular games industry. There are more consoles because now you have the PlayStation, the Xbox, the Wii or the Wii U, you have the handheld consoles and you have um, PC, right? So, um, for instance, 15 years ago you had the PlayStation, there wasn't an Xbox yet, there was a Nintendo 64, um, there is no... Um, s well, there was still a Sega if I'm not mistaken, um, but in general, there were just less um, less platforms to game on. But the uh, important thing is that the market has expanded uh, exponentially since the start of gaming history. Let's say real gaming history, mid '80s. So um, it's something that the game industry just doesn't want to accept that prices they used 15 years ago are no longer viable in the current economic climate and the cu the current market something that it has changed and the game industry has refused to change with it for instance um, many platforms now try to push for digital downloads which is basically a good thing right digital downloads is a good thing and Steam is very popular and it shows that digital downloads are actually quite popular but this is my problem that I have with digital downloads and a problem that I have in extension with Steam if I buy a game off Steam a new game new release it will cost me the same as I went to a retailer right so where I buy my games uh, I get uh, points and eventually I can have a gift certificate which will allow me to you know get 15 euros off on my next purchase right and um, it costs the same as on Steam uh, but I get a physical copy of the game get the discs I get uh, instruction manual which from time to time I'd love to uh, go through um, maybe some other th things uh, are inside the box. Um, I can catch up on the latest gaming news, asking people for, well, employees that work there for advice or various questions that I may have. And it, it costs the exact um, same amount as on Steam. But I get so much more for it than I get on Steam. So that's my problem on Steam. Steam should be cheaper because you do not have to have a physical copy so everything that's required to make a physical copy is just out the door. That You don't have to do that so that means you don't need the materials for discs. You don't need to buy uh, CDs or DVDs to uh, effectively create your game. You don't have to send it to a factory where they do that. You don't need to buy 
the plastic cases you don't need to make an instruction manual you don't need to ship it around the world because everything is digital then I ask you why does it cost the same as in a retail store where everything that I just mentioned is in included in the cost price so I'm thinking Steam gets a lot of money out of, th out of this right because you have the retail store who of course needs to make money they have to make a profit and the same if, if Steam and my retail store where I go to if they would make the same amount of profit on every game then of course the uh, retailer would have higher costs because of the uh, production costs and the transportation costs of the physical copies right but it's not the, the price is the same so that can only mean that steam is making a lot of money of the difference between you know the actual retail price and the production cost so everything that goes into production cost is basically profit for either steam or for the developers right now I'm, I'm just focusing on steam but it's it's also possible that the developers are claiming all that money still that's not the right way to go because how can you you know motivate people to buy games online uh, with steam um, when the price is basically the same and that's that's really really hard and I think there are many people who still think the same way that they think hmm I, it's just I, I like to have a physical copy and on Steam it's just it's a it's as expensive as retail so why should I buy it on Steam I could easily go to my retail and pick it up there it's just why should I do that and if you have a bad internet connection then you can still say alright I buy the physical copy I install it which might go faster depending on your PC um, than downloading it so I can understand why people still go to their retailer um, but then when you look at the Steam sales when you have for instance the summer and winter sales those are the two main sales periods you have midweek madness and whatever um, but the real sales in uh, the summer and winter sales there are so many users on Steam that buy video games and because the amount of discount you get at that moment is huge 75 percent 66 percent 50 percent that is incredible and a lot of people buy games at that time at that specific moment just because just because everything is way cheaper so it doesn't mean that games when they're cheaper that they can't make money because it's, it's clear when you look at the numbers of the steam sale uh, when they they sell stuff it's it's clear that they sell a lot more games than in a normal week w against uh, when when they sell like to the regular price so I can understand why people are still you know hesitant of buying new games on Steam because the price doesn't matter good thing about Steam is indie games you can have a lot of indie games that are lower in cost that can be as fun as a triple a title and you can get them from anywhere i mean indie games uh, it's it's they don't usually show up in retailers right they, you can only basically download them off the internet and uh play them or download them from services like Steam so that's a good thing that the indie game industry has a lot of advantages from Steam but the triple A titles I, I just cannot comprehend why the prices are still the same then there's also the used game sales that is problematic for the console industry right so what is their way of thinking is all right someone buys our game he sells it back to the retailer and the retailer sells the game again against a lower price so that means that the person who buys the used game will not buy for the uh, same version but new so that means the developers and 
the publishers will not get money out of that deal but the store does right so they th view it as a, as a way that they lose money uh, or at least potential money now they think that the state of the industry right now is a, a consequence of the um, used and uh, pirates the used sales and the pirated games but that's not true right because if you want to pirate games on consoles you need to modify your console not many people can do that so for consoles pirating is as good as out of the question right so everybody who makes games for consoles cannot bitch about console piracy because it's virtually virtually non-existent right if I wanted to pirate a game for a console I would have no idea how to start with that I cannot just go on the internet and you know download the game and then put it in my console and play it no that's not how it works you have to that's from what I've heard you have to physically mod your console to allow that so I'm, I'm not gonna do that because I have no idea how to do that then the used game sales I can understand their argument you know I can understand why they say that they lose money out of it because it is they don't get the money for the game uh, the retailer gets everything but then you don't have to ask yourself is that uh, the retailers fault or is that the developers and publishers fault because games are expensive right and used games are cheaper a lot cheaper when you buy when I bu buy a used game or when I browse through the used game section in my retailer where I go to um, if it's a new game you can have about a third of the original price of a new game you know it's just away it's just gone right so a new game 56 euros if you buy it used you'll get f it for 45 that is 20 euros a third of the original cost that is an enormous amount right that means if you buy two used games instead of two new games you can buy an extra game for yourself that's how people view it they just save a shitload of money on buying games used right because there are so many games right now so many triple A titles and people just don't have the money to buy all of them so they have to make a choice right but people they do not want to make a choice if they don't have to that's just the way people are if you have to make a choice between Call of Duty Black Ops 2 and uh, Battlefield 3 but there's an option where you can get both games for the same um, for the price of one or for a reduced price with full benefits uh, of online and you know support and everything then why not go for that why would you want to have two new copies when you can have two used copies that will perform the same actions and just cost less alright you have to know that some people might have had their hands on this but that's not a big deal unless you have a germ germ phobia then that's not a good idea but still right I'm talking about normal people here and it's just really weird that people that the um, people working at publishers and developers that they do not seem to understand this that games are just so expensive and there are so many of them so many triple A titles so many indie titles arcade games games you can download on PSN um, it's just incredible that they do not understand how that the used game business can still exist they they think all right it's it's taking away um, our money that we deserve but it's just that's just not true if they would make their games just a, a bit cheaper then I think the sales of video games would increase a lot more or that the amount of video games sold would increase right and another solution they have well a solution they have is well let's implement some DRM uh, 
especially for computer games, let's implement DRM that's just fucking ridiculous. You know what? That's just a that's just a challenge to hackers. That's just saying, all right, we challenge you to hack our video game. We challenge you, right? Instead of making it user friendly, maybe giving you some benefits when you buy the game legit or just lower the price a bit that would really help the game industry but they don't do that they just keep on holding on to the same prices that they've been holding on to for the last maybe 20 years so that's why the game industry is just in it's not going down actually that's just also a myth but that that's why I can understand why they make less money but it's their fault mainly not the consumers fault they fuck up by delivering incomplete games by um, making games expensive by putting draconic DRM into video games which force you to be online and god knows what for maybe people who want to play a game that don't have internet there are maybe a few still out there um, and then they are surprised that the consumer is like dude that's actually not really cool what you guys are doing you're punishing every legit buyer out there and you know that will only give more incentive to those people for pirating or for getting used games so it's the game industry who has you know created this problem for itself and now is blaming uh, the consumers for everything that's happened because of that and that's just completely wrong also for instance with the used games which I haven't mentioned yet is the fact that some used games simply aren't available as a new game anymore right so if you go to a retail store you can easily find well not easily but there are chances you can find some older games that you might have missed because they were too expensive to buy at the time they were released you can find them for a, a price that's just you know almost nothing when you compare it to new games maybe 20 20 years or 20 bucks or 25 bucks and that's just people will think well uh, I can buy this game now why not right so that that's you know uh, a reason that people buy used games also for games they can't find anymore in a new version so that's also a reason why they do that and I can understand and they they didn't buy the the game when it was new because it was probably too expensive or because they had to make a choice between two two games and they picked the other one so that is why some people uh, you know buy used games and it can help the industry as well because I remember I bought Mass Effect 1 no I bought Mass Effect 2 for my PC right and it was it was it was a new game so PC uh, there are no used copies anymore for PC so I bought it new I played the game thought it was fantastic I looked for Mass Effect 1 couldn't find it the game was at that time maybe four years old so I had to buy it used but I played Mass Effect 1, right? So it got me more into the series, which ultimately led me to not only buying a DLC pack for Mass Effect 1, but also buying Mass Effect 3. So eventually they made money out of the used games. And that, hap that has happened in tons of occasions. For instance, same with Assassin's Creed. I bought Assassin's Creed 2 on PC, played the game, thought it was fantastic. Right. Then I found the original Assassin's Creed uh, in a used version. So I bought that and then I became a fan of the series and I bought uh, Brotherhood and 3. Revelations I did not buy. Maybe I'll buy it used one day. But it can help people. It can help the publishers who condemn used games. It can help them get more sales because they create new fans right same goes for um, basically any any great series that's out there P 
people buy it maybe the original one because they heard it's such a great game they buy it for a cheap ass price and then they're like wow this is actually a pretty fun game and then they want to play the second one or maybe the third one and retailers they retailers are happy about that because they get more money but that also means that the developers and publishers get more money but they don't focus on that side they never say that used games help them only thing they have in in only thing they see is just a loss of income not something that can actually help sell a game i mean for instance when you that's something that happens now on PSN and Xbox Live they give away free games right now if you have played um, for instance if you haven't played Assassin's Creed right and I think a month ago it was free on Xbox Live I don't know about PSN because I don't have a PS3 right but if you download that game for free and you play it and you're like whoa this game is actually really really good then you might wanna consider buying the rest of the series maybe you buy Assassin's Creed 3 just because you thought Assassin's Creed 2 was so great and that is income that the publishers and developers get so they do not have the right to complain that that is destroying the industry if and besides if they uh, you know lose money and everything it, it can also happen through bad marketing rushing the game that is not always the customer's fault right um, if, if just bad you know investments on, on, on the developer side can also fuck them over they don't have to pretend that it's the consumer's fault for not showing enough interest or whatever that's just pure solely their fault right so to publishers and developers stop complaining right stop pretending that this is a huge problem right because it's not you're just imagining things or you just want to make people feel bad when they for instance buy a used game that they you know buy a, a, a new game with the used game or anything like that that is something you can also do but that would be even even lower than you than you are already are but I'm hoping that because you know there are still more and more uh, developer studios and there are more and more games out there and more and more gamers which is something you have to remember as well there are more gamers out there than there were 15 20 years ago gaming has become more socially accepted now than it was 15 20 years ago 15 years ago when you played a lot of video games you were a nerd a real nerd you were yeah, you, you were shunned by society because they thought you were strange. Now, if you, you tell people I play uh, video games, then some people, well, most people will not have any have anything bad to say about that. So that's also something that has changed. And that's the problem with the game industry. They do not, you know, they do not keep up with the ever-changing world. And they they try to be so old-fashioned and basically every every industry has done that at least at some point they try to be so old-fashioned and they they do not accept new media or new ways to to uh, you know sell their products and well then eventually they 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 see that what they that their solutions so-called solutions that they don't have help at all or sometimes even make the problem worse that they eventually embrace it and then things will go better again so if the games industry is really uh, committed on improving itself then it should just you know accept the fact that we are living in a more globally connected world that uh, there are more games out there more gamers that not every gamer has a huge budget to spend on video games because most people don't have that especially when games are still they say that the most part of the gamers are bit somewhere in their 20s or early 30s right but still young people are also a very big part of the gaming community 
so it's stupid to you know price everything in such a way that they cannot buy a lot of games because they are dependent of their parents and if their parents need to buy a game that is 65 euros they'll say well that's expensive let's buy something cheaper um, so that is something the game industry has to keep in mind and I think personally that there is no problem with the game industry there is no problem you still have the same amount of quality titles there are so many quality titles out there there are indie games that can create entire new uh, game mechanics that you never seen in triple-a titles but that are so much fun that it's that indie game becomes a great game um, I just don't see what developers and uh, publishers are complaining about it's I think it's something they it's just the scapegoat effect they just need some one or something to blame because they do not want to face the fact that they are actually uh, fucking everything up no it's easier to blame someone else for your failures than it is to blame yourself for your own failures and I think that that is what happening uh, that's what's happening in the game industry many people are just blaming the community they're blaming the gamers for shit they did wrong and you know the gamers they they just take it but I, I know gamers just sort of sit there and, and they just take it sort of they just take the fact and people think well, it might be true but it's not the gamers fault not at all if any developer says it is I'm pretty sure they are fucking lying or they're hiding something because that's always something that happens when even when they show you charts there are there is information that they've hidden from you that you cannot see and uh, well that will give you you know a wrong picture of the entire situation so let me recap real quick piracy and used games are not to blame for the state of the game industry steam is pushing digital downloads and is you know helping to drop the price a bit at least during the summer sales or during the sales but it's still part of the problem in my opinion when it comes to full when you buy new games uh, retail and uh, the game industry is largely it itself to blame for the problems that they're having right now um, let's see is there anything else mm, I covered piracy and used games as much as I can um, or as much as I know about it. I think I've dealt with everything so um, if you like this video then you know subscribe or comment or like it uh, just let me know and if you wanna hear my opinion about certain certain issues then just let me know and I'll talk about them um, and until well my next video so uh, peace out guys